I never thought of it in that way because I never have had the thought of career in my mind for whatever reason. So what happened with me was that when I was um, 17 years old, I worked on a ship in the Eastern Arctic. It was called the Eastern Arctic Patrol. It was a government uh, ship that delivered supplies and people into the Eastern Arctic and brought out Inuit people if they had tuberculosis so they could be treated in a, in a facility. And my job was developing x-rays as part of, the, uh, of part of the medical team on board. And I bought myself a Yashica 44 camera, you know, that, that took colored slides that were 44 millimeters square rather than 35 slightly elongated. And I love taking pictures. I think it's because somehow or other, I've always been uh, a very visual person. You know, I don't really know the science of this, but it said we lean towards certain um, forms of, of learning. Some people are book learners. I was never a book learner. So although I didn't realize it until the day I was thrown out of university, which I was, um, I didn't realize how much I hated school. I didn't allow myself to, to feel that. But school never worked for me because sitting still for hours and hours and listening to someone talk in a sense at you, because our schools weren't conversational discourse, not in my experience. So I just started, I like taking pictures and part of my learning is what's now, I now know it's called kinetic learning. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm, and I don't say this in any bragging way. I just say this as a description. I've never read a book on filmmaking. I've never taken a course on filmmaking or photography. I've never do do dived into articles about filmmaking photography. I just started doing it and I'll explain why. And so, you know, I've made, I don't know, 70 documentaries, about uh, 250 dramas, but I've never, you know, the first time I started shooting my own video for Prom Night in Mississippi, the documentary, I bought a Sony XHA1 camera. I started to look at the, um, uh, the instruction booklet. And what happens with me with instruction booklets, whether it's for my latest uh, DVD or Blu-ray player or that camera, is that while I can do it, I kind of zone out. It's like, oh, it's too dense. It's too dense. So I phoned up a master cinematographer friend and said, hey, do you know the XHA1 camera? He said, yeah, I got one. I said, I just bought one. Will you show me how to use it? He said, sure, come on over. So I learned how to use it in one hour with my friend and I went off and started shooting this feature movie, Prom Night in Mississippi. So uh, what I'm saying is that career was never a word in my vocabulary, really. So I just like taking pictures. Um, so when I, when I went to India, really to find a different me, that was really what I was trying to do. Um, I took along my my sort of bottom of the line Pentax that I could afford. And I had a, a 135 lens, which I love, you know, it's a great portrait lens and I had a 50 lens. <laughs> and I knew so little in the sense of technical that the way I did the exposures, because of course in those days there was no automatic uh, focus, no automatic exposure is in the Kodak box of Ektachrome 64 film is the little instruction piece of paper that's folded up and I unfolded it and it says bright sun F22, three quarters sun F11. That's how I did the exposures. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, I guess what I'm saying is that for me, my work has always been uh, a visceral response to my life experiences. So the first film I ever made which was a 20 minute black and white film on Bo Diddley doing a one day visit to Toronto in concert, was a friend of mine was an acolyte of Bo Diddley's. And I said, hey, let's film this. And I didn't have any experience, nor did I have any means. So I went to CBC television news and I said, hey, you give me a cameraman and a sound man. They were both men in those days, 1971. And um, I'll film for the day and I get to own the film, which they would never do nowadays, but you, I'll cut you uh, an item however long you want, four minutes, six minutes. They said, sure. 
that's how I got my first film made. So, you know, and then one thing just led to another. So what that means is, you know, I would go to a bakery in Kensington Market, which was the traditional Jewish market in Toronto, but then as different immigrant groups flowed through the entrance to emigrating to Toronto, it became uh, a much more mixed ethnic marketplace. Well, there was a bakery there called Pearl Mutter's Bakery, a Jewish family. The bakery had been there since, I don't know, 50, 60 years. And it was not only a place of a remarkable quality bread and buns. I mean, it's still the best bakery I've ever been to, although it closed many years ago. But the family was joyful and they sang and they joked and the place was filled and I would go. And it, I thought, I want to film this. I want to share this with others. It took me two years to convince the family who were simply modest. No, no, Paul, come on, forget it. So after two years of asking, they finally said, okay. And I made my second documentary called The Perlmutter Story. And it, it, to my surprise, it won the top three awards at the Canadian Film Awards that year. And it was kind of unheard of because it won best documentary okay it won best director okay but it actually won best of festival which means it beat all the dramas which is like nope that that was pretty unheard of and so I was interviewed for the first time in my life and I remember this clearly it was a man I can sort of see him in my mind and he said to me why do you make the films you make and in that moment I had to think I'd never thought of that and what came out of my mouth was I said, I make films about people that give me courage so that that can encourage other people. And that's kind of it. And in my 20s, and again, where these things come from, I think they come from soul. I think they come from divine presence, which I was not brought up to believe. I was brought up to believe there's no God, there's no soul, there's no spirit. But I was brought up to believe do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. That was the main principle of our family. And uh, but I had this epiphany in my 20s and, and the words were exactly this. I thought I can make junk food for people's psyches or I can make health food for people's psyches. And I'm obliged not to make junk food because that hurts people. 